guys, it's Ace BYT and welcome back to a brand new video. Now today we're talking about how potentially OnePlus and Xiaomi might just be about to take over the smartphone world. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. Hi guys and welcome back. Like I said, today we're talking, it's a big discussion point today. OnePlus and Xiaomi, they, they might just be flipping the script on this smartphone game. Now this isn't just a one-way discussion. I want your opinions in the comment section below. So as we go through this, let me know what you think. So firstly, why have I singled out Xiaomi and OnePlus in this video? Well, it's a simple reason. In terms of their overall goals, they both have intentions to provide some really great products, but to undercut the sort of establishment when it comes to smartphones, the likes of Apple and Samsung. Great products, cheaper price. And the way both of these companies are angling for global takeover comes in two big areas. Now on one hand, OnePlus, they produce a overall, a very premium product in which they leave out a few expensive features in order to give an overall great product at a cheaper price. The likes of it's water resistant, but it doesn't have an official rating. It doesn't have wireless charging. We're talking the OnePlus 6T by the way, but it's been pretty much the same thing ever since this little bad boy was released. The OnePlus One, good old sandstone. And these expensive emissions have meant that OnePlus can produce an all-rounded pretty great phone, but they can afford to shave off quite a few pennies. The McLaren edition, which is the most expensive OnePlus 6T was around six $600 when it was released. The Note 9 most feature rich all round smartphone in its cheapest variant was 900 to 1000. So straight away we're making quite a saving on the OnePlus 6T without compromising too much. The way Xiaomi are able to bring their prices down and still produce great products, quite frankly, they don't really look to make much profit. And that may seem very strange to a lot of you guys, but it is their vision with the likes of the Mi Mix 3, the likes of the Redmi Note 7, the likes of the Poco Phone F1, which still comes under the Xiaomi umbrella. And again, the list goes on, is they want to get their name out there, conquer the budget, mid and premium range of smartphones, and number one, make some money off their software, but also, and more importantly, they're playing the long game. In their opinion, if they can get their name worldwide, because they make products right across the board from smartphones to home speakers, to laptops, to tablets, to TVs, they will begin to be able to control many areas of tech across many different countries. And then once they can do that, in my humble opinion, the price is may just raise how much is at Xiaomi's discretion. And this tactic can actually be seen with OnePlus currently right now. And yes, of course there is inflation for example, but when the OnePlus One came out, it produced premium flagship specs at $300 and ever so slightly, release by release, the price edges up a little bit. And yes, some people would say it's the nature of the beast. As a brand becomes more popular, the consumer wants more features, they try and produce more features, those features are more expensive, they have to jump up a little bit in order to make it a viable business model. How much a business makes and how gluttonous they are is again another matter. So in my opinion, both companies have to be very careful, certainly in the next few years, that they don't out jump their brand and identity because I think it will be very damaging if they become too expensive. Now we're jumping onto the second way that both of these companies potentially are tearing up the game is aiming their products at specific regions. Now, if you live in the West, for example, if you're from the UK, parts of Europe, the US, the majority of people that own smartphones would fall into two brackets, Apple, and Samsung. Yes, there are exceptions to the rule and there are a lot of sales for other products, but in terms of the two core sales, those are the two brands that most people... The McLaren edition has just taken a dive off the desk, which is great. It's all right, she's still alive. But of course, those specific regions obviously only account for a part of the global population. And two key regions that Xiaomi and OnePlus focus on are of course, China, and India. Now starting with India, in terms of estimated population, we're looking at around 1.3 billion people in India alone. It's actually probably closer to 1.4 billion. And this figure makes India the second most populated country in the world. And the number one most populated country in the world, you guessed it, China. So India's population makes up about 17%, which would make China probably around 18%. So straight away, we have Good maths. Approximately 35% of the world. 
conquer that market, and jobs are good and And that's pretty much what's happening right now. Now, the actual sales between India and China are quite different, but we'll get to both because the readings are very interesting. Starting with India, we'll take quarter three in 2018 as an example. Samsung had 22% of the market share across all different ranges of priced products. Xiaomi had 27%, which was the highest out of any other brand because for Xiaomi, they have products that run right across the board as opposed to Apple, for example, who have budget options, but they're not really truly that budget. They generally focus on their premium devices. Xiaomi have products that range from sort of 100 and 150 pounds right up to, I say right up to, still around four or 500 pounds. So in terms of market share, they can impose themselves a lot easier. Now in this specific survey, while OnePlus aren't able to actually jump onto that list, their sister companies, Vivo and Oppo are on the list with 10% and 8% respectively. OnePlus have managed to do something which is really pretty incredible in the premium smartphone area. Now, 2018 actually saw a decline in smartphone sales, including in the final quarter of 2000, I don't know why I'm doing this. In the final quarter of 2018, there was a 7% decline in sales. However, in India, there was an 8% increase in premium smartphone sales. OnePlus, they've been able to take up a 37% market share, beating Apple, beating Samsung in that premium area. Now, of course, that 37% market share was in quarter four of 2018. The overall year by 1% was just won by Samsung, and that's down to probably quarter one when the Samsung S9 would have been released, for example, and OnePlus didn't produce a product in that whole quarter. So in terms of all sales, Xiaomi are leading the race in India, and in terms of premium smartphone sales, OnePlus are running the scene. So they're up against the big boys and they're winning in India. So we've seen how both companies are just about taking over India. Let's see what they're doing in China. Of course, both Chinese brands, you would expect them to be very popular, but actually it's Xiaomi that fare better than OnePlus in China and across the whole region, it's not completely cut and dry at all. Again, using quarter three as an example, Xiaomi were able to take up 13% of the market share. The highest was Huawei with 23%, but in second and third, sister companies Oppo and Vivo took up 21%. Now I would imagine Oppo and Vivo were slightly more successful than OnePlus because of the cheaper prices generally of their products. And again, they have numerous different products, whereas OnePlus just kind of do their flagship, the 6 and the 6T in 18 as an example. Apple on the list, just 9% in quarter three and Samsung nowhere to be seen. In fact, to find Samsung anywhere in the market share, you have to go back to quarter one of last year where they managed 1%. And again, while this video isn't a bashing of Apple and Samsung by any means, it's simply a video to reflect on what we've seen in the market. And with two of the biggest populations in the world favoring other brands, you've got to feel that Samsung and Apple will be looking over their shoulders because those glory years might just be about to crash. Now, of course, nobody knows how the future is going to play out and both Apple and Samsung are releasing more budget-ish products into the market. And in my opinion, they're solely doing that as a way to kind of take back the market share in those specific regions, even more than Europe and the US, for example. I don't feel the latter are the regions that they're aiming these products at. As always, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Are you a Xiaomi or a OnePlus fan? Why do you think they have been so successful in China, in India, and growing in popularity across the rest of the world? Do you think the likes of Samsung and Apple should be worried? Do you think they are worried? As always, guys, I love all different products and all different brands. Competition at the end of the day has to be a good thing for the end consumer. 2019 is certainly going to be an amazing year for smartphones and I can't wait to test and review as many as I can for you guys to give you the best information about the products so that you make smarter purchase decisions. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram ASB underscore YT for all that behind the scenes action that I'm not able to share here on YouTube. As always, like and share if you did enjoy this video and find it helpful. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you're new to the channel or want to be notified every time I post a video on anything tech, pretty much daily content here on YouTube. I love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, be all TV South.